flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. Good evening, everyone. Is there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, sir. No, sir. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the last public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Quick Great. question, President Shade. I believe we do. I believe Administrator Bennett has an addition to the agenda. Uh oh. Okay. Is this item 18, uh, tax abatement on Gothi Street? You got it. Okay. Um, sir, well, I'll make a motion then that we do make a add a addition to the agenda. Okay, this would be item 18. This is a tax abatement in Cumberland for Gothi Street, Maryland Avenue, uh, two properties. Is there a second? Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that'll be uh, item 18 on consent. Okay. Moving on to our presentations tonight, we uh, have a lot of people here, so welcome. Um, our first is for Allegheny College of Maryland. This is a 60th anniversary official citation. We have Dr. Bamberas here and uh, David Jones, as well as uh, Kim Leonard, who's on the Board of Trustees. So please, come on up. The Board of County Commissioners of Allegheny County deem it necessary to bestow and honor the accolades of organizations that demonstrated excellence to the service of Allegheny County and the greater region. Allegheny County government believes in Allegheny College of Maryland's mission of delivering diverse and relevant education centered around student success in a supportive and engaging community. The county values the important mission of the college through quality education that has provided for 60 years. Allegheny Community College was founded in 1961 to provide quality, affordable education and workforce development to our residents. The college leadership and board of trustees provide solid direction for the future of ACM. The college's faculty and staff are dedicated to provided students with quality transfer and career programs that will prepare them for the workforce. And the college alumni uh, are employed throughout the community in critical roles to ensure that the community continues to move forward. And it's for these reasons we, the Board of County Commissioners, do hereby extend our greatest gratitude to all associated with ACM past and present and wish to publicly recognize Allegheny College on its 60th anniversary. That's signed the 7th day of October 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, our second one, item two, is uh, UPMC Western Maryland, the American College of Cardiology, Chest and Pain, MI Registry 2020 Platinum Performance Award. Um, this is a really big deal, and we have Director Jim Piles is going to say a few words first. <clears throat> Commissioners, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Beam, and Ms. Linda, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. 
Commissioners, I'm very pleased to stand here in our amazing partnership with UPMC Western Maryland. What brings us here this evening? The best of the best. Only the two hospitals in Maryland received the award that UPMC Western Maryland received. Commissioners, what's this award based upon? Three metrics. Number one is pre-hospital care, pre-EMS hospital care. That's our EMS providers throughout Allegheny County. That's our 911 center, our joint communication center. Our 911 center is the heartbeat of Allegheny County because when a loved one calls and their loved one's having a heart attack, time is heart muscle dying. Time is lack of oxygen to the brain. Number two is care within the hospital. Number three is post-hospital care. So you need to perform above average without any, any mistakes, anything to get this award. That was done. Every, measure, measure, every metric was met to receive this amazing award. I have with me today, I have James Cartstedler, Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer, UPMC Western Maryland. I have Dr. Haas, uh, Director, Cardiovascular Service. Doctor, the first time I met you was July 2nd of last year. My father suffered a heart attack in my arms, and you took time to explain everything you need to explain to me. You took that extra 10 minutes. I certainly appreciate that, and I'll never forget that. Dr. Marine Chaffee, my friend and our uh, medical director and our medical director for Gone Toms. In the back, we have Chief Chris Biggs, Chief of Emergency Services for Allegheny County. Commissioners, care in Allegheny County has never been better, thanks to UPMC Western Maryland. EMS in Allegheny County has never been better. Thank you for everything you do for us, and I'll turn it over to you, Commissioners. Thank Great. you. Sir? Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's uh, gives us pleasure to have you in this community and it's it's just a great thing to have here locally that we can point to and say this is one of the best hospitals um, around for cardiac care absolutely sir okay so we have dr. Shafi dr. Haas and uh, mr. Karstetter please come on up This would read, UPMC Western Maryland has earned the American College of Cardiology's Chest Pain MI Registry 2021 Platinum Performance Achievement Award and is one of only two hospitals in the state of Maryland with this recognition. The staff performance metrics for this prestigious award include pre-hospital EMS standards, in-hospital in care standards, and post-hospital metrics. This award, uh, the American College, College of Cardiology, has recognized the life-saving complex medical work and exceptional high performance of the personnel who care for cardiac patients in Allegheny County. In the United States, someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds, and in Allegheny County, heart attack patients are able to begin the road to recovery immediately, starting with a call to 911, the Allegheny County Department of Emergency Services uh, work to ensure that citizens and visitors receive the best possible pre-hospital EMS care in the fastest and safest manner. Therefore, we, the Board of Commissioners, do gratefully acknowledge the significant contributions of all of our partners and extend sincere congratulations to UPMC Western Maryland, UPMC Western Maryland Cardi Cardiovascular Services, and Allegheny County Department of Emergency Services. Congratulations. <laughs> Did any of you want to say anything, or if you would, yeah. all good. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your copy, by the way? That's yours. Oh, oh, I just like Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on call, so I do have to get back. Hey, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> sir. Thanks. Okay. And now for something completely different. We have a... Uh, local resident who was just on the uh, Hell's Kitchen Young Gun. Please, come on up. Yeah. 
Come on, you can bring them all up, guys. Bring the whole family. Come on, please, please, come on. How are you? Good. I'm very awkward. You're just going to see me. Yeah, but <laughs> Get up here. I don't cook for anyone. There we go. This is for Kaya Wilhelm Hell's Kitchen National Competition, and it reads: Kaya Wilhelm, a lifelong resident of Barrelville in Allegheny County, was selected in a nationwide search to participate in a, the competitive reality TV series Hell's Kitchen, hosted by world-renowned chef Gordon Ramsay. Where as a young gun, Kaya competed against 18 aspiring chefs throughout the United States at Gordon Ramsay's Hell Ki Hell's Kitchen restaurant, Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas. She successfully advanced to be in the 15 different food and beverage challenges from Gordon Ramsay and masterfully, masterfully completed the intense competition in third place. Her stellar performance in this nationwide spotlight was solely responsible for bringing positive natural recognition to our community. Therefore, we, the Board of Commissioners, wish to hereby publicly recognize, congratulate, and commend Kaya Wilhelm. We, uh, this is the seventh day of October, 2021, and all three of us signed it. Congratulations. Hi, would you like to say a couple words? Yeah, you give a speech, here? please. <laughs> no. I'm telling you, you had everyone in the in the county on the edge of their seats, and I know this happened a while back, but yes. not for us. Yes. So. Yes. Um, I just appreciate everybody's support an awful lot. It means a lot to come from a small town. A lot of people don't understand that. And I say that in almost any interview I give. It uh, means a lot, the community feel and how we help each other out. And it showed a lot in the support that I got on social media and obviously meeting everybody. Uh, not really meeting everybody, but for me, meeting everybody uh, every time I came into contact with new people. So they knew me, but I didn't know them, but now we all know each other. So <laughs> um, I guess I'll give you a funny story. So one of the funniest things on Hell's Kitchen, um, I don't know if it was clear on the show, but I'm very brutally honest. <laughs> so uh, one thing that they didn't show, it's like a little insider look. Um, at one point, Chef Ramsay is um, telling me that I need to keep that spirit, keep the brutal honesty. And he said, where do you get it from? And I said, of course, my mother. Mm. So that's my funny story. <laughs> Kaya, you are working in the area, that I know, because uh, ate, you fixed me lunch Tuesday. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, do you, you want to tell everyone where you're currently working at or this oh, or that? Like four <laughs> Please tell them all, because I'm, tell yeah. Oh, okay, um, Monday, Tuesdays, I work at Ginger's to help out Daniel Reed. He's uh -huh. a really short staff, so I serve and cook at times. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, I cook at Barrel Ball Tour Club. It's a member-owned bar. Um, and then Saturday, Sunday, I bartend. And then I do cakes and catering, and I still help out with the uh, Arthur Frederick County base out of Cumberland every now and then. Wow. So, well, thank you for that. Uh, and I teach a class at AC on Thursday. Sorry, I forgot. I'm <laughs> so, so what do you do in your spare time? I, I don't do anything. Oh, okay. So, so you didn't do well this year in the Santa shoot at Barrelville? No, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I beat a lot of people. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our public hearing, we have our uh, our own resident chef here, uh, oh, yeah. Mr. David Nedved, <laughs> and uh, this is for the Flintstone wastewater treatment plant. This is a public hearing, so you get to follow all that, Dave. Yeah. I was going to say this is the chance for anyone that wants to, they can leave. <laughs> <laughs> this is the boring part. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, commissioners. Um, as we've gone through before, uh, notice was given in the Cumberland Times News on Saturday, October 2nd, that the Allegheny County Commissioners would sponsor public hearings on the following subjects. One, to obtain views of citizens on community development, economic development, and housing needs. And number two, um, the reason for the meetings in general, to offer citizens the opportunity to review applications for funds for the Flintstone wastewater treatment plant upgrade. The, um, for the Flintstone wastewater treatment plant upgrade project, the Allegheny County Commissioners submitted an application to the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development on October 7th, 2021. And before that, that got it there before the deadline of October 8th. And this is for a community development block grant of 800,000. A draft application for the project was available for the public to review and to provide comments beginning Monday, September 20th at, the, our, at our department, at DECTI, at the Department of Economic and Community Development. And the public could review and provide comments on the application for five working days, with the last day being Friday, September 24th. And at this point, I'll open the hearing. Uh, anybody, is there anyone that has a comment or a question in regards to the subjects? Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there any public comment? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Gentlemen, moving on to our action agenda tonight, uh, item five is a lease purchase between the Board of Commissioners and AV Pittsburgh Plate and Glass, LLC. Uh, Mr. Nathan Price. Good evening, Mr. Commissioners. So, so we're here tonight to approve uh, two things. We want to um, approve an assignment of lease with AB Pittsburgh uh, Plate Glass LLC. And basically, they will be assuming all rights and obligations of uh, Hetzel Properties LLC, who was the previous tenant of this property. And the property in question is 11201 Pittsburgh Plate Glass Road in Cumberland at our North Branch uh, Industrial Park. And then also, we're excited to enter into a five-year uh, lease purchase agreement uh, with the same company. And you know, we're very lucky to have uh, developers of this stature uh, take an interest in Allegheny County. We feel like this is, has a great uh, opportunity for increased employment. And uh, actually, CEO uh, Jim Abdo would like to say a few, say a few words. Great. Please. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners. Thanks a lot for uh, allowing us to be with you tonight. Um, we, uh, we're, my name is Jim Abdo. I'm the president and CEO of Abdo Development out of Washington, D.C. This is uh, Gordon Buse, who's our chief operating officer. Um, we have been in business in the, in the district for about 35 years, and I can tell you that it, this has been nothing but refreshing for us to be here in your county. Um, working with you know, Jeff and uh, with, with Nathan has, been, has just been absolutely fantastic. Everybody in your economic development office is extremely professional. And from start to finish, this has just been nothing but fantastic. We're very excited to be coming here. Uh, after tonight, we are literally almost within hours going to be investing millions of dollars here in your county. We're going to be creating local jobs here. Uh, we're here for the long haul. We, we are very bullish on everything that we're seeing here, uh, and particularly, most, most, most importantly, the people. We think you have a great workforce in this county, and you've got great leadership. And we're just happy to be a small part of it, and we congratulate you, and we're very excited, and we thank you. Thank great. you. Well, sir, we, we certainly appreciate your investment in our county. We're, we welcome you and, and can't wait. So if there's anything more we can do, please don't hesitate. Well, we th can't thank you enough. And this is happening, like, in real time. I mean, we're expecting to be operational uh, as early as the first quarter of 2022. And like I said, we are uh, we're pulling the trigger <laughs> tomorrow. We're pushing the we're pushing the uh, send button on wires, and uh, we're investing a tremendous amount in equipment. Uh, we were on the site today for close to four hours. Met Good. with the with your fire uh, official out there, who was fantastic. We met with architects out there, so everything is uh, is moving moving at, at at really quick speed, which is we love it. We're excited and we're happy to be here. Wow. Great. 
Thank you for everything. Well, thank you. Welcome to Allegheny County, and we look forward to working with you. Well, it's, it's a beautiful county, by the way. It's a pleasure driving out here. I, my, my blood pressure went down. <laughs> <laughs> the further I got out of Washington, D.C., I can assure you. That's, That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, yes, sir. gentlemen, is there any discussion? One moment, please. Sure. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is there any discussion on this? Is, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, there. And ma'am, thank you, by the way, for stopping us because that was the most important reason we were here tonight. Was to, to, to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Very thank good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. We, we really look forward to this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Moving on, item six is our uh, uh, Allegheny County Department of Public Works ARPA funding. This is the uh, stimulus funding, and this is our first round of uh, spending out of it. Commissioners, good evening. Uh, Public Works has put together a long list of projects that we would like to utilize the ARP funding for, um, a total of eight projects in various water districts, a total of 12 projects in various sewer districts, um, a very important project what we like to call our other public miscellaneous stormwater improvements, a project on the bike trail to address a, a slide issue, and some HVAC issues in several county buildings. Um, a total of $4.665 million worth of projects. Um, with regard to the water and sewer projects, the greatest thing about these projects here are this is old, older infrastructure, failing infrastructure. I've worked with our utilities division directly to make sure that these are the highest priority, and albeit that we are usually successful in getting grant and loan funds, these projects here will not raise customer rates. So I'm asking for your approval tonight. Great. Gentlemen, 4.6 million, um, all going right back into public works. Is there any discussion? Can't wait to make the motion, sir. <laughs> is that a motion? It is. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. Gentlemen, continuing on that, item number seven is Last Mile Broadband Infrastructure Grant. Um, this is out of the uh, ARPA funding as well. Um, this would be $550,000 to improve broadband. And, and actually how we're going to do it this time, 50000 is going to be available directly to residents. So um, if you have a big bill, basically, um, or a big cost to, to run Comcast or whatever it is to your house and internet provider, we're going to pay half the cost. So this is a pilot program. This is the first time that we've ever done that before um, because we're, we're trying to connect that last mile. So that's going to be 50000 of it. That'll be available for, for individual residents as well as neighbors can apply for that. Um, if there's a couple of people on a street that you would like to, uh, to bring Internet service, the county is going to cover half the cost of that. Um, uh, you just submit the invoice to us and we'll pay it. The other 500000 is going to be for uh, Internet service providers to actually apply for. And um, again, we're doing this a little differently. So they're going to come to us with projects and they're going to say, hey, we can expand service to this many households. We think it's going to cost this and then it would be a grant as long as they do that. So we think we can really get s some good um, coverage out of this. And uh, we, we think it's going to be really good moving forward because we, we've kind of covered all the main areas with, with, with broadband. Now it's kind of the bits and pieces, and it, it, it's, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to move forward. So what we're trying to do is, is have the people on the ground closest that know the most uh, be the ones leading the discussion and, and trying to get the money out the door. So, gentlemen, that's item number seven. Is there any discussion? Well, sir, I know that you've worked very, very hard on this. Uh, uh, 
I know you would like to make this motion, but who's going to be the point of contact? Because we're, we're getting lots and lots of questions from outlying areas. So who do they need to contact here at the county? So, this? Commissioner, we're actually going to be starting the roll this out over the next couple of weeks. So as we do, we'll put an announcement out on the website and do a press release as far as the contact information and where they can apply to. Okay. So we're still rolling out some of the details. Two separate programs, one for individuals and one for the internet service providers. So, thank you, Jake. Cause very good. I'm excited. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, moving on to item eight is our last one. Action. It's a modification of our uh, drainage improvement. Temporary modification. Adam Patterson. Thank you again, sir. Um, as you're aware, the county has had a program to assist with private property drainage issues in the past. Traditionally, it's been a 50-50 cost share program. Uh, what we'd like to do is, uh, in light of uh, the, the ARP money um, that was just approved tonight, and following on the heels of a, of a major storm event here, we would t like to request that the private side participation be reduced to 20% to try to take care of as many projects as we can with this funding and, and really help the residents of Allegheny County. Do you have any questions? No, I mean, I think with the recent storm, I think this is fitting. Very good, sir, yes. Adam, you getting uh, lots of uh, projects? We have a nice backlog right now of people we went out and we've met with, and so we have, uh, we've been waiting for this opportunity tonight to then um, to talk to residents about a, a very favorable cost share program to be able to address these problems. Okay. okay. Gentlemen, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Moving on to our consent agenda, Administrator Bennett. So, Commissioners, 10 items on your consent agenda tonight, um, and you're going to see a theme here with the American Recovery Plan. Um, item nine is the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office ARP funding um, expenditure of $117,850. Item 10 is for the state's attorney's office for the same thing in the amount of $11,368. Item 11 is for the detention center in the amount of $445,735. Item 12, um, same thing for the tourism office for $100,000. Item 13 is Skyview Drive acceptance into the county road system. Item 14 is the fiscal year 22 unified planning work program approval in the amount of $24,079. Item five is resolution 21-20, a change to the rules and regulations governing Allegheny County employees. Uh, item 16 is the 2020 planning grant for Tri-County Council for Western Maryland um, in the amount of $30,000. Item 17 is community promotions um, for $500 to go to the Joe Hauser Memory Walk. And item 18, which was added to the agenda, is a request for tax abatement uh, for two properties owned by the City of Cumberland, um, one at 471 Gothy Street, one at 802 Maryland Avenue. Uh, those properties will be demolished and, and put back out for future use. Very good. Fantastic. Okay, gentlemen, is there any discussion? No, sir. I'll make a motion we accept the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay. Administrator Bennett. So, so two other quick additions. Um, one, you've heard a, a whole bunch tonight of the ARPA spending. Uh, we're starting to roll that out now. As you know, we had a work session a couple weeks back on this. Uh, there's approximately $6 million that we're going to start the process for spending now. Um, as you know, we have a little less than $14 million here. We're going to take our time with it, make sure we're picking out projects that have a good long-term benefit for us. So what you see tonight was essentially the low-hanging fruit that was ready to roll. So we're getting that rolling now, and we'll continue to bring projects to you over the next um, several weeks to months to even years, as we have three years to spend this money. Um, so that was one. Two, I just want to thank two different departments who are well represented here tonight, Public Works and Economic Development. Um, they've both really rolled up their sleeves lately, a lot of trying to figure out the ARPA money. That's all additions to us that we've all had to figure out. They've jumped right in on it. And as you can see, Economic Development's really been out banging on doors lately, and we're starting to see those results as we see a new business coming here tonight. So I just want to thank them. Absolutely. Attorney Beeman. Well, I mean, that Thank you. Great. 
Commissioner Caporelli. We have uh, Delegate Buckle here this evening. Anything to add, Delegate? You're not yeah, suffering from insomnia uh, again, are you? Fascinating. You guys have spent about uh, millions and millions of dollars in like seven seconds. That's just, just like Annapolis, huh? <laughs> you know? just, just like Annapolis. Just like Annapolis. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Burke. Sir, I have nothing except it is good to see our minority whip here tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. For, for those that don't know, Delegate Buckle was recently made the uh, House Minority Leader, which is the top Republican um, in the House of Delegates, and I think is the first person from Allegheny County to ever hold that position. Uh, I think since the 1950s, yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, Great. We also have from uh, Cumberland Councilman Frazier is here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Eugene. Very Hiding good. in the back. Very good. Um, and, and I'd also like to thank, uh, we met with State Highway today. We had our, our annual meeting. Uh, Director Patterson, thank you for preparing that. Um, you know, we, we, we work together and work well a lot better than, uh, than other counties do with, with the state. And um, it's been night and day since the Hogan administration took over. Um, we don't have the same issues we did six years ago, you know, when it comes to permitting and, and uh, other issues with State Highway. So the relationship's been, been very productive, and uh, we talked about some projects that, that we absolutely need to see happen um, in the next 18 months uh, during this administration so we can, we can keep moving forward. Um, the other thing, I, I also want to thank Economic Development and Jeff, you know, I, we know it, but, but just to the general public, it takes time to, to fill the pipeline with all these prospects. And, and when good things start happening, it's, it's the result of work that started many months ago or years ago. And so you're starting to see the result of, of what we did a couple years ago uh, is coming to fruition. So that's really good to see. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm glad everyone could come out this evening. Um, you know, it was great with ACM and UPMC and uh, our, our uh, Hell's Kitchen uh, lady. That was, that was just a great meeting tonight. So um, with that, we have a few people signed up to speak. Um, uh, one is on Skyview Drive, Wayne, Wayne Rue. Yeah. I think we already passed it, but yeah. come on up. <laughs> Okay, my name is Wayne Rue. I'm from Lavelle, Maryland. I represent the property owners of Skyview Drive in Lavelle. For approximately two years, we have been working on this project. One year ago, last August, we requested a, a variance from the commissioners. We then had a feasibility study for Skyview Drive property owners to be included in the county road system. We then contacted the county engineer for required mandates for us to be incorporated into the county road system. The engineer contacted county road superintendent, Mr. Schweitzer. He visited and reviewed Skyview Drive and gave us a list of improvements that needed to be completed before we could be considered. After completing a few punch list items, final inspection was made and recommendation was given to the county commissioners. At this time, we, the property owners, would like to thank Adam Patterson, Director of Public Works, and also Scott Schweitzer, County Road Superintendent, for all their patience with us and the recommendations. Also, thanks to Linda Simpson for scheduling us at this meeting. Lastly, thanks to the Allegheny County Commissioners for their final approval for Skyview Drive to be accepted into the county road system. It is greatly appreciated by all the property owners of Skyview Drive. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Wayne, could you give your address just for the record? Yes. My address is uh, Lavelle, 11 March Lane in Lavelle. Perfect. All righty. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you again. There'll be a plow truck coming down this, this uh, winter, so. <laughs> but hopefully not soon. Yeah, that's right. Not for a couple of months, let's hope. All right. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Glenn Stallman.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Glenn Stallman. I live on Cache Valley Road, 11510. Cache Valley Road, Cumberland, Maryland, 21502-6057. I haven't been here for a long time. I get wound up and then I cool off and then I get wound up again and I get cooled off. And what I'm here for is I am just tired of Cache Valley Road being a speedway. And I expect you three guys to do something about it quick. Glenn, can I help you out there? Sure. It's me up here. Oh, over there. Hi, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> the, the commissioners just took action actually tonight. Um, some of the sheriff's purchases with our American recovery money is for two remote uh, mobile speed units to be put out to start some of the enforcement. The sheriff certainly knows there's issues at Cache Valley and other places. Um, so hopefully this will this will start to help you. Well, I hope so, Jason. I've asked and asked, and Cache Valley Road is three and a half miles long. It's definitely a country road, and it's definitely the most busy road on the Allegheny County system, and it gets no attention. We have a radar camera at both ends of the valley, and neither one of them's hooked up. There's 17 30-mile-an-hour speed limit signs on Cache Valley Road. Think about that. 17. There was 18, but a lady in a black Dodge pickup ran off the road and, and knocked the 18th one over. And now we have 17. We have, a, we have an elementary school that there's buses there all the time. And there's cars in and out of there all the time. And there's one lousy school sign on that whole road from one end to the other. Those 30 mile an hour speed limit signs, I would say that half of them's got brush road across them. The first one coming in from the Vale, you can't even see the post that it's on. I used to cut the brush off of it. I, I give up on it because, you know, there's no sense in it. There's, there's a sign at the railroad crossing. Of course, there's a nice big fancy sign there for the bike trail. I asked the county when the bike trail first opened to put signs on, this, on Cache Valley Road, not a good bike trail. You know what to put up? Share the road signs. So then you have two or three bicycles going and you can't get around them anyway. But anyway, Cache Valley Road is, is absolutely neglected. The sheriff's office goes through, and then they go through the other way, and that's all you hear. State police comes through because there's two state policemen who live up on, on uh, Colony Heights. They do more ticket writing than anybody does. But this, this, this Cache Valley Road has got to be taken care of. Because I've raised a family there. I've lived there for 56 years. I can tell by the space between the fence post and the telephone post how long it takes them to go through there. I can tell you how fast those cars are going. And when those cars go through there, 50 and 60 and 70 miles an hour, you can tell it. And I want, I want something done about it. I, I uh, did have a good thing by, from phone calls 10 years ago. Uh, I called Adam Patterson about putting a farm tractor sign up at the top of the hump. The day before that, I was hauling manure, and I had two of those road cones. I put it up the top of the hill from my barn, and a lady in a Subaru come across the hill, and I looked up, and she had both of them underneath the car, and I ended up going to Sheets to find them. That's what kind of stuff that goes on Cache Valley Road. When I first moved there, there was 37 families. Now there's over 125 families. There has to be something done. I call the sheriff's department. 
about different things that goes on. I called here about five or six weeks ago on a Saturday afternoon. There was kids from Frostburg on mini bikes or dirt bikes up on the bike trail. And my daughter-in-law and her two little kids was up there, and that's how I knew about it, and they about run her over. And I called the sheriff's department, and I said, I want somebody to come out and do something about it. And the lady that answered the phone at the sheriff's department, and as true as I'm sitting here, or standing here, told me. She said, I'm sorry, but we don't have any four-wheel drive vehicles to go up there. Now, when I came into the parking lot, I counted four four-wheel drive pickups sitting in the parking lot right now. But that's what the dispatcher told me. We don't have any four-wheel drive vehicles to go up there. I ended up calling the state police because they got in my field, my hay field, and was riding their bikes in there, and the state police came and arrested them. And they wondered why I didn't call the, the sheriff's department, and I told them the story, and they just looked up at the sky. But anyway, I wrote this list, July the 18th, 2020. And I've, I've came to the meeting and didn't sign up because I wanted to see what else he had going on. But I, I have an offer to make. I will pay a deputy's wage and, exp and county expenses for him to come and work from 6 o'clock in the morning until their shift stops at 3 or whatever, and the second one to, to be there from 3 o'clock until 8 o'clock at night. And I want radar set up, and I want tickets rigged. And I will pay the bill. Do you understand that? I will pay the bill. And I'm good for it. Anybody have any questions? Dave? No, sir. <laughs> Who do we mail that bill? What's your, keep your address so we know to yes. mail the bill to. That'd be a good place to send it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I said all of that and never said a cuss word. You notice <laughs> that? <laughs> good job, Glenn. <laughs> you did it. Okay. Uh, hey, listen, I'm, ser I'm serious, fellas. You know, I don't want anybody hurt. I don't want anybody to get in a lot of trouble, and I certainly don't want... Can you imagine if something would happen to one of my grandkids over there? Yeah. Well, I, I think we can absolutely make sure those trailers are there. The first road that they're on when we get them will be Cache Valley. And, Thank you. Uh, that'll be a good start, I hope. All right. Dibby, we okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Mm. How's Dad? Thank you for everything. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Stolman. Thanks. Thanks, Glenn. It is an issue. Uh, yeah. We'll speak oh, up. It, it's a very yeah. bad issue. Yeah. 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 The thing is, we work out there, and it's right. taking your life in your and own hands. Out, I'm outside. Yeah. I'm, I see everything that goes on. And yeah. right. I, I stopped one guy. I followed him from my house in a tractor and trailer. I, I, when he went by, I was backing out to go someplace. Till I got to Corganville. I was at Sugar Camp Lane, and I looked over, and he'd already turned and was going towards Mount Sack. That's how fast. Well, very. We'll have to continue this after the meeting because we got more people signed up. Okay. So thanks, Glenn. All right. I didn't take everybody's time. But anyway, okay. You up next, we have Mr. Uh, Danny Williams. Dan Williams, 12916 St. George's Lane, Mount Savage. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I'm here this evening. Um, I talked with Mr. Carpenter a good bit, and Gary would have been here himself, but he's under the weather a little bit. Four years ago, out in front of the building, we put in a, a beautiful monument, a line of death on duty. 
they, so we sold a bunch of bricks for people if you want to remember somebody or whatever and put all around it. It's nice. It's beautiful. At that time, we talked to Mr. Smith, and I think Adam was in, in on that at the time, and you guys were doing a whole lot of construction stuff, do whatever, and, and I know how it, it didn't get done at the time, and it wasn't a major concern at the time to put the, because uh, when you walk up to it to read the names and that on the front, uh, you're walking up a concrete walkway, and then all the memorial bricks are in front of it. And then there's a bunch around behind it where the one in front is for all uh, fire, anybody in the fire service who was actually uh, had a line of death, line of duty death. They died on the job or got killed there. Um, this past February, we lost a really good man who was on the EMS side of it. Mr. Mark Blackard was a paramedic. He was a paramedic for the county. He worked for Chris, great guy. Was out on a call. Things were pretty stressful, whatever. When Mr. Blackard got home right thereafter, he had a heart attack and he didn't make it. So Mark's name is going to go on the back of that plaque of that monument because front side is fire, back side is EMS. Um, we will have that engraved there before too long, but before that's done, uh, I'd like to. We would like to. Everybody worked on that thing. Have that little piece. It's probably what Paul two foot wide at the most. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, Adam. I'm, I was speaking to you and was thinking about Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Patterson, it's what? Two <laughs> foot and a half, two foot wide at the most around it. We do that all the time. Two. <laughs> that wasn't a slander thing. That was just force, force of habit. I'm sorry, Adam. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's what you call getting even with the guy up front. <laughs> You're right, Adam. I am older than you, considerably. I think he was. He meant Paul. Paul. Oh, well, I'm older than both of you guys. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, what we'd like to do is have Mr. Smith or whoever's doing it right now just do that. I think it's probably two foot wide. Whatever. Continue that concrete around the back of it, because right now if the gentleman's family or anybody goes in to look at it and walks around back to see Mr. Blackard's name and that on that end of it, they're walking through the grass and the mud and the dirt. And when they come back around to get out of there, either way, going in or out, they're going to be walking over top of those bricks that everybody bought in memory of your mom, your dad, whoever. And that would keep a lot of wear and tear on them bricks and we keep a lot of dirt off the whole monument stuff because you know people are going to be going, going in to see it. And we just ask that uh, not that big of a deal. If they need help, we can come down and help put some forms in and we'll get her done. Uh, yeah, I think we can take care of getting that done. I we'll, think that's, we'll work yeah, with Adam it, it, and It's Bruce. not a big thing, but yeah. before that gets engraved and everybody's walking around looking at it, it'd be nice if we just had that little part finished. I know it just got lost in a lot of other work the boys had to do at that time frame and in COVID and all that, but appreciate it if, if we could do something on it. And the only one other thing I would ask you tonight, total different subject. Start my five minutes over, Jake. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, when you're doing this stuff for the, uh, the internet mm -hmm. and to supply all that out there, Kiss who's ever but you have to to get somebody while they're doing that to do something to get some self-service in that valley. I know we always hear, hey, it's from Mount Savage. You don't get nothing up there. My point that would fall into Chris's people, uh, we're sitting on a $48,000 heart monitor in the back of our new ambulance. And from Zillman to Corganville, it does not work. 
you, they have to have cell service to do the telemetry to the hospital. If you can do something to try to get that jogged. Uh, we, you guys already own the tower that's on top of Bald Knob. Yeah, we can. The electric there, everything's there. They, uh, back when Dickie was here, they offered it to some of the cell phone companies, and everybody said, well, one, we're too close to Pennsylvania, and two, we wouldn't make enough money off of the people that had cell phones working there. <coughs> How much money is a life worth? It's a freebie. All they got to do is hang an antenna. Yeah. I, I think these broadband uh, grants would apply to a cell phone company as well because they're going to be providing Internet. So yeah. it, it should fit the bill. So we'll, we'll put it out. Anything you can do to try happens. to help because those guys in the back of that ambulance from Zillman to Corganville are blind. Thanks, guys. Appreciate what you do. Very well, thank good. You, sir. Thanks, Danny. Okay. Up next we have uh, Miss Tiffany Fisher. Hello, I'm Hi, back. Tiffany Fisher, 184 North Center Street. I am the president of the NAACP. I'm also the founder of Western Maryland United. I work with the Brownsville Project, and I sit on the board of the Maryland Health Equity Inclusion Alliance. I'm here today drawing concern to COVID, and Commissioner Jake Shade, I'm gonna speak directly to you about some certain things. You, um, when we went to the city council a couple weeks ago, you made a statement that there will be no school shutdowns, there will be no mask mandate, Businesses will not close. We will not go back in. Well, businesses are having to cut their hours and shut down because their employers cannot work because they have COVID. Children are missing school up to 10, time, 10 days at a time because they've been exposed or have COVID. The other day, I sat in my car on the corner of Decatur Street. I wanted so bad to go in and pay my respects to Kelly, a man who dedicated his life to saving our lives. Yet, something stopped me. No one had a mask on. This man that dedicated his life a man that would be honored on those same bricks that the young man was up here speaking at before me, a man that was willing to die for this community, lost his life to this disease, and at that moment when we had such a beautiful ceremony for him, no one felt the need to wear a mask. Commissioner Shade said, we're pushing vaccines. It's not working. I read the numbers every day. We have tons of vaccine clinics. You're not the only ones pushing it. The city council's pushing it. The state's pushing it. People in our community are choosing and opting out of vaccination. The CDC, the state health department, the county health department have all went to the Board of Education and said, in order for us to climb out of this, we need to respect all layers of protection. So if vaccination is not working, we continue to push it, but we move down. We require mass mandates. We continue with social distancing. Tonight, it was me and who I brought with me and one other person wearing a mask inside. Yesterday was the first day in 13 days we didn't have somebody die of COVID. Yet you'll sit here and say, we're not gonna close down because it's a political thing. It's not political. Last year, someone accused someone in Garrett County of committing a racial terror act. Jake took it upon himself to say, that doesn't happen in my Western Maryland. Well, my Western Maryland, we unite together, regardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It's about the fact that I grew up with Dave. It's about that my grandmother and somebody else's grandmother were friends and sat together at church. 
We put all the politics aside and stand together because after the election, when you get on the other side of that mountain, those folks down in Annapolis, they forget us. So we always come together. We take care of us. But somehow, in some way, when you guys got that seat, you forgot that. The most beautiful thing about this community is even in the midst of us having our issues, we see each other. Do you not see us? We're dying. There's no sense for it. Our hospital is overflowing. It's had to shut the emergency room doors and turn people away. MedExpress has, you have to sign up now because they have a seven hour waiting list just to be tested. Jobs are no longer saying that you can take off for 10 days and be paid for it because there's no money. Let's not forget last time when we went through this, this time last year there were stimulus checks. There was money coming from the government. There was an additional money coming from unemployment. That's not happening. So in a community where we have a union rescue mission, a women's, a women's safety shelter, and a family crisis center, we are risking homelessness and COVID at the same time with one hospital to facilitate it that we are keeping barely staffed. Yet we sit here and act like we didn't wear these masks all last year. This is not a political statement. This is not about religion. We're dying. This isn't even about race. It's not people that look like me. It's not people from the community that I typically stand here at this podium and talk about. It's all of us. Be responsible. Stand on a platform for your upcoming election and say, you know what? I put political party aside. Vote for me whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Green Party, because when the tough times come, I'm going to vote for the people. That's why you're in that seat, because of people. We're not numbers. We're not decimal points. We're not money. We're not ballots. We're human beings. I'm passionate because I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know how you can go and honor somebody, how you can take that oath and say you're going to stand for community and put it first, and know that that man suffered. He suffered, and that still didn't hit you. What will it take? We have to do something as a community. You can't keep making this about politics. It's about human beings. Well, I can tell you this. The three of us have never made this about politics. I disagree. And well, you can disagree all you want. Do you know anyone who, who hasn't had the vaccine? I know several people in this community who have chosen and, not to get the okay. vaccine. And if you, but and everybody hold, hold in my on, community, hold on, hold on, I have hold reached on, out hold on, to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And have you spoke to them about the importance of getting the vaccine? Commissioner Shade, not only has my branch spoken to them, we have offered vaccine clinics, we have had conversations and panels, we have showed up, we had a vaccination clinic at our Juneteenth, that's why I'm on the Maryland Health and Equity and Alliance Board. I have pushed for vaccines to reach out clear to Bearville and Mount Safish, explaining that people that live in Grantsville are being left out, yes. Okay. To answer your question, yes, daily. Okay. And are some of them still unvaccinated? What is the purpose of your question, sir? I'm, I'm just asking. You, you talked for a long time, and I just Oh, I didn't talk question. as long as the other people. I've been watching. Well, I, if, are, are, they, are they still unvaccinated? Because here's my point. We do the same things. We send people to Western Port. We've sent people to Flintstone. We've sent people all across the county where it's low vaccination rates. All of us encourage the vaccine. But that you're is not wearing this. Thing. You're not encouraging this. The it can't just way, be the vaccine. The CDC. The vaccine is the only way no. we're going to get out. How, you, how long are we supposed to wear the mask? Are you, have you because read Because we're the not going to shut down Jake, businesses. Listen to me and answer no, my question no, now. No, 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 no. Yes, you, I'm you, a citizen. You're, you're I'm welcome a citizen. to ask whatever you want. You, you didn't answer my first question. I did answer though. your question. So, I said so yes. So still unvaccinated. I said that there are people that are still vaccinated. That's why we need to push masking. So if you can't convince them, 
How are I'm we not asking you to convince people to wear a mask, um, to convince people to be vaccinated. I'm asking you to understand that since vaccination alone is not working, to move past to the next layer and also require masks in public and in indoor places. That's what I'm asking, Jake. I'm not asking you to convince you, somebody to get a vaccine. You are, I never even said that. You are welcome to wear a mask anywhere, anytime. We are not going to require them because the safest way against coronavirus is the vaccine. That's the first layer. That's from the CDC that and the health department. That is the most important thing. That's the first layer. Did you read the rest of it? Did you read the rest of the report in the documentation? They they add all sorts of things, but we can't. They add all so sorts of things. They have they are we in the hospital. Keep, we can't it. keep socially distancing. And I'll tell you another thing: if you compare the counties around us. We are more vaccinated than everyone but Washington but County. But we're not in Maryland. Huh? Mineral in County, Maryland, West we're Virginia, not. we're higher. Hampshire County, we're higher. Garrett County, we're higher. Bedford County, we're higher. Somerset County, we're more highly vaccinated than anyone else. So don't try to make it seem like it's an Allegheny County problem. Oh, it's, it's not? It's our whole region. It you, is a regional problem. And, I've, and, and tonight, you, the same way I'm standing here, there's somebody that went to Washington County and somebody that's going to Garrett County. But I'm an Allegheny County citizen, and you represent Allegheny County, so I'm here. Just like I live in the city of Cumberland, I went to the city council. And they said it was not in their hands, so I asked them. And if you don't want to make the decision, that's fine. I'm asking for you to stand with me and go downstate and ask them to make the decision. If you feel like you're not powerful to do that enough, we'll stand with you. But somebody has to do something because we're dying. I guess that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, up next we have Ms. Uh, Tiffany Brown. Good evening, everyone. Tiffany Brown, 630 Lincoln Street, Cumberland, Maryland, 21502. I have a few notes. Just to reiterate and um, follow up on what President Fisher said of the NAACP, I'm Tiffany Brown, I'm Community Engagement Outreach Chair. I'm also second um, VP for the NAACP branch here at Allegheny County. I think one part of what's being overlooked as vital here with the numbers is that it's our county health department producing those numbers. Um, it sounds like it was a one-man decision, although I know it's not. It should be a coordinated effort. Department heads from the Board of Ed, the County um, Health Department, even, as I heard, the Economic <laughs> Development Office, um, just to address impact on businesses. I've heard you say the people closest to the ground should be leading the discussion. Where is the Department of Health in your decision-making, the data? That's what your decision should be based on. And Allegheny County has the lowest vaccination rate in the state of Maryland, which is what we should be concerned with. Um, in addition, our county health department promotes strategy for a strategy for layers of protection. Why does it change once it reaches, reaches this county commission? Why isn't there a countywide promotion of the layers so that we can increase education, increase awareness, and decrease the numbers? Um, I'll give you an example of uh, a simple impact in our school system. The teachers are waiting on the administration. The administration is waiting on the city and the county. The city and county is waiting on the state and the state is waiting on the federal government. Um, you're leaders. You don't have to wait on the state. Um, so I hope that you can take a look again at the data from the department heads, come together and discuss some strategies for this county and be responsive to the constituents you serve. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And, and I'll say it one more time. Everyone should be vaccinated. 
It is a horrible disease. It continues to kill people in our community and across the country every day. And unfortunately, there is a avalanche of misinformation on the other side of this um, that's, that's convincing people that, that the vaccine is, is dangerous or harmful or, or uh, you know, that it, it's not going to happen to you. And it, and it can happen to you. It can happen to anyone. And so that's, that's what we're going to continue to push. And um, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's where we are. But I'll, I'll tell you this. We're not going to make businesses shut down. We're not going to tell people that they have to social distance again. If you'd like to wear a mask, if you feel uncomfortable, then, then that's for your prerogative. At this point, the vaccine is available. It's free. It's everywhere. Um, and, and you can get it very quickly. So um, if you haven't gotten it yet, I would encourage you to do so. Anything? No, sir. Okay. Gentlemen, with that, our next public business meeting is Thursday, October 21st, 5 p.m. Thank you.